We're in the final stretch of the federal election as Canadians get ready to head to the polls in just a few days. For the last month, we've been breaking down each party's platform. Today, we're looking at the Liberal Party platform. And Peter Sashaki from Everything Financial joins us now with more. Good morning, Peter. We've been talking about all of the parties. It started with the Greens, the NDP. Last week was the Conservative Party. And finally, we, uh, we end this sort of round with the Liberals. Uh, thanks for joining us. So yeah, let's thanks, start Jerry. with the... Let's... let's... <laughs> <laughs> We're doing one of those back and forth things. Okay, let's start and we'll dive right in here. The Liberals, um, they say they would like to tax capital gains on personal residences. What is your take on this? Yeah, this is a slippery slope to go down and Canadians will revolt against this one and just have riots in the streets, not quite. But what they're, what they're really proposing to start with is if you sell your house within a year. So it's been called a, if you flip a house tax sort of thing. Here's the problem. When governments and any governments, Liberals, Conservative, NDP, doesn't matter, bring in something that's kind of a temporary measure, it opens the floodgates to where is this going to go? And that's where the slippery slope is. Touching Canadians' personal residence is taboo. Because remember, income tax was a temporary measure about 100 years ago. So um, this not in favor of this one. If there was a way to get this where you could guarantee this would only be a one year or two year thing if you were flipping a house, I'm okay with that because we've talked about that you and I earlier in the season sometime about to slow down housing prices. But once you open it up where they're allowed to do it, where does it end? And all of a sudden one year becomes five years, becomes 10 years and who knows? And suddenly our houses are no longer a tax-free item when we sell our personal residence. Mm, and I know that housing is such a big issue and that's why um, they're also saying that they're gonna be taxing vacant property for non-residences. Yes, vacant property for non-residents. Um, all the parties, to be fair, are proposing this one. Slightly different levels of it and different tax rates, but this is a good one where I'm okay with every party saying they're gonna tax uh, vacant residents. That's okay because this will help with some of the housing prices. So you can stay away from the personal residents and the capital gains, go after the foreign buyers and the vacant residents and tax them heavily, but you have to make it worthwhile so that it actually discourages them from having vacant residence. It has to be a big tax to make it work. It can't be a slap on the wrist and something that just looks good in the sound bite. So hopefully every party's on board with making this a really tax that, a real, that really sticks and really hurts the foreign buyers in the pocketbook. Okay, and, and lastly, the Liberal Party say they, they will update the assessments for the disability tax credit so that an estimated 45,000 additional people will qualify. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is a good thing. This is uh, a few parties have talked about this, but when I saw this a few weeks ago in the Liberals thing, I said I definitely have a, a positive thing there because we deal with a lot of people who are disabled and, and have a really having trouble qualifying for what is a disability and getting the tax credits they deserve. Now, remember, if you're on disability, whatever it is, a, an injury or a long term illness or something like that, you're, you're living above the poverty line barely, but you're, you're making less money than you were making before when you were working, because the theory is it's supposed to encourage you to get back to work. But what if you just can't get back to work? It's gotta be easier to get some of that help. It'll be less of a burden on some of our social programs in Canada, allowing those people who are on disability to have a little self pride and be able to stand on their own two feet. And, and those tax breaks and the tax credits to help and not just tax deductions, but tax credits can go a long way and easing the definition and making it a little broader is a great thing and kudos to the Liberals for that one. Well, Peter Sashaki from Everything Financial, thanks for uh, each week sort of giving us a clear perspective of how each of these party platforms are gonna be impacting us financially. And I guess we'll find out what happens uh, on Monday, election day. I guess we'll probably, well, we'll know about it when we're on the air next week. Have a great week, Carrie. Yeah, you too, thanks for that, Peter.